Situated on Monument Hill in Pretoria, South Africa's capital, and visible from almost every location in the city, the Four Trekker Monument stands as a tribute to the Afrikaner people and the role they played in building the Rainbow Nation. In the 1830s and 40s, 12,000 Afrikaners left the Cape Colony in search of a better life on a journey known as the Great Trek. Aside from founding the Boer Republics of Natalia, the Orange Free State and the Transvaal, which now form five of the nine provinces of modern-day South Africa, these pioneers brought with them the sport of yukske. It's a family sport. The origins of yukske lie with the trekkers and their ox wagons. Yukske was a way for families to play and take part in something fun together. It's thought that the game can be traced back to the 1730s, when it was invented by transport drivers delivering timber used in the construction of Cape Town's fort. Yukske only became official in 1939, when the sport's first governing body was founded and a set of rules drawn up. Its name derives from the Afrikaans for the yoke of the ox wagon, the yuk, which is placed in the ground as the target. The pin, the object that's thrown, is called a ske. The distance between a thrower and the target depends upon age and gender and ranges from 11 to 16 meters. It's a game of skill and it's very important to have good coordination. I think yukske is one of the most strategic sports there is. For a player to be able to both aim and throw the ske over such a long distance with control takes a lot of practice and coordination. One of the sport's greatest exponents is Elna Vandenberg. She took up yukske at the age of seven and is now South Africa's most capped player, male or female. It's great because it's always a challenge. Yukske is not an easy sport. You always have to give your best and that's what makes it fun. I really like it. The game is also played in Namibia and Zimbabwe, where its roots go back over 50 years. While international matches do take place, the sport is primarily a club and provincial affair. The Yukske National Championships, the highlight of the Yukske calendar, take place each year in the town of Kronstadt. It's a very sociable sport, and it's great for meeting people. Being able to form friendships with people from across the country is one of the best things about Yuxke. Matches are played in either pairs, threes or teams of four, and the aim is to be the first to score exactly 23 points. Each player throws two skates. Landing it within a radius of 18 inches of the yuk scores one point, while knocking it over is worth three. However, if your opponent also knocks over the yuk, then the three points are cancelled out. If a player exceeds the 23 points, then their total reverts to zero. Historically, games used to last for days. Rumour has it that the longest took four. But now, matches have a time limit of 45 minutes. Time, however, is not the main concern of the players of Yukske today. The problem is, is that this is not a sport that generates an income. In rugby, soccer and cricket, spectators pay to watch the games. We don't have that. All the money we need is generated through player donations. In 2001, Yukske was chosen by the South African government as one of seven sports to be included in the Indigenous Games Project, a program identifying traditional sports that needed to be encouraged and developed. 
Yuxke's inclusion in the government's indigenous program has seen the game's popularity expand across all cultures. And while many see it as a game for old people, newcomers of all ages and backgrounds are challenging that stereotype by taking up the sport. Certainly I think I'll play for a couple more years, until I have to use a walking stick. Because the bug has bitten me, and I really like Yuxke. All I can say is that I'm sorry I discovered the game so late, because it's a great game, and you get to meet some good, good people. There's no racism involved. It's like being part of a big family. Having been around for over 250 years, and with the government attempting to safeguard the sport's future, what now for this traditional South African pastime? We must work hard at getting the children to play, because they're the future of Yuxke. I mean, we're all getting older, and some of the players are getting too old to play. We must get the younger kids involved, so it doesn't die out.